In this video, I'm going to show you how to entirely mod or jailbreak your PS Vita without the need of a PC or laptop. Today I'll be using my PS Vita 1000 model, but this guide will work on all models including the PS Vita Slim and PS TV. Now before I start, I'm going to go into safe mode to completely reset and restore my PS Vita and start from scratch. Before starting the jailbreaking process, I recommend getting a SD to Vita micro SD adapter and a micro SD card. This will allow you to store all your games, themes, emulators, and more on the micro SD card. These are also recommended since the PS Vita memory cards are overpriced and have such little space. First things first, we need to update our console to the latest firmware. As I said in the intro, we do not need a PC or laptop, but we do need a stable Wi-Fi connection throughout this entire guide. Now that your console has been updated and booted back up with the latest firmware, we need to go into the browser app and type this exact website into the address bar. Once you get to this page, tap unlock my Vita and tap unlock once more on the bottom right. Your Vita will now close out the browser app on its own and load straight into the homebrew installer. From here, you're going to want to install Hinkaku and then install Vita Deploy. After you're done installing both, you're going to want to scroll out to exit and click X. You will then want to head over to settings and from here you'll go into your new category named Henkaku settings. Enable unsafe homebrew feature and exit out to the new app you had installed earlier, Vita Deploy. As you can tell, this looks similar to your settings except there's a bunch of new features and categories in here. You're going to then want to go into app downloader and check every single box for these homebrew apps here. Next, you're going to want to scroll to the top and download the selected apps. After every app is done installing, exit out. From here, your PS Vita library will now showcase all those apps you've installed. Now go back into Vita Deploy to install a different OS, then into Quick 3.65 install. This just basically downgrades your Vita to a jailbroken version. After clicking X, your console will then start a system update on its own. As soon as your console boots back up from being updated, go back into settings. Scroll down to system, then into auto start settings, and make sure this top box is unchecked. This ensures and protects the Vita from having any future updates that could potentially ruin your homebrewed Vita. Now go back to Hinkaku settings, make sure all three of these boxes are checked, and then go into spoofed version. Enable to play online through PSN. Set this number to 3.74. You're going to always want to make sure that this number stays the same as the latest Vita update or firmware. Now go ahead and grab that SD to Vita adapter along with your micro SD card. PS Vita will only read the adapter with it being in the game slot. This is also located on the top left of the device. Once put in, you're going to want to go into this installer. Install the light version. After your Vita reboots, go right back into Vita Deploy. Go into Miscellaneous, then right into Format as Storage Device. Make sure the target is SD to Vita and the file system text fat, then format it. Once done, close out and go into Settings. Go into Devices, Storage Devices, Make sure this box is checked. Now before resetting your device, make sure UX0 is set to SD to Vita and the UMA0 is set to memory card. Then of course reset. After your device turns back on, go into your settings once more to double check that your micro SD storage is now in use and is being used as your memory. And to also check that you're on firmware 3.65. Now that your Vita is fully modded, you can go into PKGJ to download all sorts of PS Vita games. Or go into Custom Themes Manager to get a few themes. Or even turn your PS Vita into a full-on PSP. 
This is what my fully modded PS Vita looks like off my TikTok page. And here are a few things you can do with yours. You can run homebrew games. You can emulate all the way to PS1. You can install and play backup games. Run custom themes. Use it to stream your PC, PS4, or even PS5. Use game mods, multiplayer mods, run online without an issue. Have access to the entire PSP and Vita library. And you can even use it docked up to a monitor or TV. The possibilities are endless on this amazing device and you can do so much more than what I have shown you today. I really hope this guide has helped you all out without any problems or issues. I'm almost at 10K on TikTok and we'll continue making content on handhelds and nostalgia gaming. My Discord server will also be linked in the description below along with my TikTok. Thank you all for watching and let me know what kind of video I should do next. I'll see you on the next one.